but you can start with all of these over-the-counter options and only move to prescription if really needed. Like under your fingernails or you shake your, your hair and it looks like it's snowing and you can't wear black. Yeah, that's seborrheic dermatitis. Hey everyone, it's Dr. Joyce Park, board certified dermatologist, and today we're going to talk about a very, very, very common condition. One that I actually have suffered from for most of my life, and that is seborrheic dermatitis. Seborrheic dermatitis is more commonly known as dandruff, but you probably don't know that it can actually manifest on your face as well and other areas of the body. So today we're going to talk about what it is, what it looks like, how to treat it, and all of my derm approved hacks for dealing with the symptoms of seborrheic dermatitis. Let's get into it. So first of all, what is seborrheic dermatitis? It is an inflammatory scaly condition that likes to affect the sebum rich areas of our skin. So that's kind of like our scalp skin, certain areas of the face, the chest, the back, and sometimes even specific spots in the groin region as well. We don't know exactly why this happens, but we think that it may have something to do with Malassezia yeast that drives it forward and makes it worse. We also know that stress can actually make seborrheic dermatitis worse, and we do see it more often in immunocompromised states, for example, in HIV or in AIDS patients. We also see more seborrheic dermatitis in specific neurologic conditions like Parkinson's as well. Seborrheic dermatitis is not only seen in adults. In fact, most of you might have seen it in your babies in the form of cradle cap. So I just had a baby nine weeks ago and my little girl currently has cradle cap as well. So I'm going through all of the potential treatment options for her too, while also dealing with dandruff on my own scalp. So what does seborrheic dermatitis look like? It usually is on a red inflamed base and there's crusted kind of scales on top of it. And this can happen commonly in the scalp where you scratch it and then you get little flakes under your fingernails or you shake your hair and it looks like it's snowing and you can't wear black. Yeah, that's seborrheic dermatitis. On the face, it likes to present oftentimes around the eyebrow region. So on the eyebrow hairs itself, in the glabella, and really commonly along the nasolabial folds. People also get it in the central chest and also upper back and sometimes even in the anogenital region as well. You can also get it in the armpits and in the folds like where your thighs meet your body, basically. Your intertriginous areas is what we call it. It can also be very commonly seen in the beard area in men and even in the eyelids too. So really, this can manifest all over the body. Let's talk about treatments for seborrheic dermatitis. So one mainstay of treatment is using an antifungal, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory shampoo. And you can use that as shampoo on your scalp, but also use it as a face wash for the face. So my big derm tip here is actually to alternate your shampoos. For example, if you wash your hair three times a week, then use a different shampoo on Monday, a different one on Wednesday, and a different one on Friday. And the trick is really to leave the shampoos on or even as a face wash for three to five minutes so it really has time to be absorbed and to work before you wash it off. So a few different antifungal, anti-inflammatory shampoos I recommend are Head & Shoulders, which has pyrithione zinc, Selsum Blue, which has selenium sulfide, and Ketoconazole Shampoo, which can be found over the counter, or you can get a prescription strength at a slightly higher percentage. But you can start with all of these over-the-counter options and only move to prescription if really needed. Secondly, you wanna look for something with salicylic acid, which is a really great exfoliant. Salicylic acid is a beta-hydroxy acid, and it really helps to lift those dead skin cell flakes off of your skin. The shampoo that I recommend is T-Cell, and then you can get any sort of salicylic acid wash for the face, like the CeraVe SA Renewing Cleanser or any other type of salicylic acid wash. You wanna make sure to leave these on, again, for a few minutes before washing off so it really has time to work. Next, for my patients who are experiencing Subderm that is not really getting better on the face, I like to recommend using a mixture of over-the-counter corticosteroids plus over-the-counter antifungal cream. So you can go out and you can buy 
topical hydrocortisone cream, like 1%. Mix that with like a ketoconazole or a clotrimazole cream all over the counter. Mix it in the palm of your hands and then apply it to all the affected areas twice a day for up to one week. If that's not working, you may need to talk to your dermatologist about a slightly higher potency topical steroid. So I like this because it targets the inflammation with the topical steroid, and then it targets the yeast with the ketoconazole or the clotrimazole. You can do the same thing for the scalp. Use a ketoconazole shampoo like we talked about, and then ask your dermatologist or your doctor for a topical steroid solution. This can come in many different forms, but I find a steroid solution is the easiest to get into the scalp itself. There's also uh, steroid oils that you can use to really get that into the scalp. So if you've tried all of the over-the-counter products and if you've tried topical prescription steroid creams and it's still not getting better, then your dermatologist can also prescribe a non-steroid cream like Protopic or Eladil. These are calcineurin inhibitors. They work to decrease inflammation in different ways that are totally separate from steroids. There are also other types of soaps that you can use if you have the seborrheic dermatitis all over your body. You can use a zinc pyrithione soap, which is kind of like that antifungal, anti-inflammatory soap. And there actually are body soaps that you can use that have salicylic acid as well. I've been using one from Naturium, the Naturium Salicylic Acid Body Wash, and that's been great. I like using it also as an added benefit on my feet to help with extra skin and hyperkeratosis there too. Hopefully this primer on seborrheic dermatitis was helpful for you. So now you know that you can start with over-the-counter products and ingredients, and if that doesn't work, to then escalate to asking your dermatologist for prescriptions. Please leave any questions or comments below, including any suggestions for topics you want me to cover. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time.